All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, morning update. I want to get this one out since there's some action that's happening. And I want to update everyone uh, on the levels for the stock market. We're going to go through some stock charts, get into it. And if you know these levels, you can make money. You know, it matters. Levels, levels matter. If you know the right levels and you're able to spot them, then you know how to trade the stocks or the indices when when we're around those levels. And so that's why it's important to understand this is basically what technical analysis is, is you know pointing out the, the, the levels, validating those levels um, and, and trends. So, um, and we use all kinds of indicators to, to help us spot the levels and also spot the possibility of, of when a trend might change. So we're gonna get into it. Here's something that I, I was, kind of looking around and I found that found this this uh, head and shoulders potential and you can see here in the queues this is the hourly chart but if you see here you've got this head and shoulders pop right here so here's your shoulder right in here here's your head and then this is your second shoulder you can see we popped right up to it right there but now we're failing and so a break of the neckline really is going to put us um, you know, impulsively down. So this might play out. We might get the break of the neckline, uh, possibly today uh, or next week, and that would set us up for you know basically a break in this uptrend that we've been in going all the way back to April 20th. So if we if that happens, I I presume that we'll probably at least drop down to this 215 level um, in in the triple Qs. And if tech breaks, the market breaks. So we jump over to the spy and one thing I wanted to point out yesterday I put this out there so here's the level I marked out in the video yesterday um, I, I said it was either 308 or sorry three anywhere from 307 to 308 but the end of the day pop was very suspicious and you see these things happen when you see it you'll recognize it and when I saw it happen I pointed out in a comment from my video from yesterday um, let me show you that comment real quick. Okay, so here's my comment from yesterday. I put it out, you know, with about with about 15 minutes left in the day, um, and I said that 307 range should be resistance and objective area to short in the spy. And basically, this is why it's important to understand the levels because when you know the levels, you know uh, you know when things are are coming into those levels, and that's when you take position. So. Here it is, I had the level marked out on the chart. Um, I had it sitting there at 307.50, um, and we did pop right up into that. So, um, you know, when I said I said 307, you know, it's a range, you know, it, you're, you're in the area close enough, basically. You don't know when people are gonna step in. So um, we popped right into that level though, and go back and watch the video from yesterday, you'll see me talking about this level, we popped into it. Um, and that was a very great clean area to take a short. And sure enough, this morning, a little little gap down and then just impulsive selling. So the market is wanting to sell at least uh, during regular session hours. I think that pop yesterday was a, a way to shake out anybody who was trying to be short. So, and, and you know, we saw it in the last hour of the day, you know, last hour of the day popped up on nothing. You know, there was no catalyst. It just was popping up. It was technically induced um, and running up to do a retest of that resistance. Once it was at resistance, it was rejected selling down. So just the read there is that we are being rejected at resistance. Um, yesterday was an example. So we'll continue to watch for continued proof that we will be rejected at resistance. Where are we going next? Well, in the SPY, we've got a gap right here. Here's this little gap. Um, we didn't quite fill it. I think they filled it in the pre-market this day, but they didn't fill it in the regular session. And I look for fills during the regular session. For, for me, pretty much all trading and the charts are all about the regular session. Uh, the pre-market is not market consensus. And so the market doesn't see that as being filled if it's pre-market. It's just, that's, that's where very thinly traded um, trading happens and it's just not market consensus. So I, I'm always looking at uh, um, regular market hours, not pre-market, and we did not fill there. So looking for that to fill, and that's sitting at 295.75, somewhere in there. But if we come back down into it, because right here, 
we did not fill before. We came down to it and it, it basically fell short of filling the gap and then popped up. Now, if you come back down to it, you're most likely going to break through it. You're going to fill and you're going to probably break through it. Okay. Because we already did the, you know, this is where the support held. This is where you would have the bounce off. And if you're going to go higher, you shouldn't be coming back down to a level, especially if you didn't fill it. So that tells me we'll break through it. And so what I see is actually right down here, this big gap right here. This is where we'll most likely find the dip buyer stepping in 286.40 uh, on the SPY. This is where the dip buyers will probably step in. And you can see this is actually the area where we had this big, it was kind of a sideways range right in here. Um, there's the top of it. Uh, but if you mark it out, we had that big area of trading action right in here that lasted, um, lasted quite a while. So I suspect that they're gonna come down. They'll probably fill the gap and then probably do a bounce back up to you know the top of that range. Maybe that's up around 295. So I suspect we'll come down, hit 286.50, uh, bounce up to 295. And then at that point, we'll have to evaluate, you know, see what's going on. It, does the market want to hold there? It could, it could possibly hold there. And maybe, you know, maybe we consolidate some more or move higher, you know, endless po possibilities. But I think in the short term, running down to here to fill 290 or 286.50, so we'll watch for that. Uh, here's the NASDAQ futures. This, this is a cleaner look at that head and shoulders that you see on the triple Qs. So look, you've got this range here and this is when we popped to all time new highs. Uh, again, I guess um, they popped it right here and made another all time new high, but that failed and we're back down. And then we made another shoulder. We bounced off the top here at this one, or uh, you know, 10,100 level. And, and then it rejected. So there's your shoulder right there. It's kind of a complex shoulder, but there's a shoulder. Here's a shoulder right in here. And then we're rejecting. So a break of this neckline, that's that's how you trade these head and shoulders patterns when you see them. Um, head and shoulder patterns can be reversal patterns. They come at the top uh, of, you know, they come at the, the, the top of extended moves up or the bottom of extended moves down. If it's at the bottom, it would be an inverse head and shoulders. At the top, it's a head and shoulders and they signal a potential reversal. And the way you trade it is you wait for the break, break of the neckline. Now you do have to understand that algos know this. This is a very common pattern. So the alg so what the algos will probably do, you know, we'll probably stop short here today and not do the break intraday and we'll probably get a gap down. The futures will break, you know, they'll, they'll move, but in the triple Qs, just going back to this real quick, you know, here's your head and shoulders. They probably won't give us, you know, give you the intraday break. It'll probably come in the form of a gap down um, because the algos know it. It's just too easy to just make it happen during our market hours. So it probably comes in a gap down and then maybe you get the impulsive selling. When you get that gap down, look for volume as well on that day. That will help confirm that, that breakdown. Um, here is XLK and the level that we're looking at is kind of this plateau right here. Um, I was looking for this to break yesterday, and this is one of the reasons why the SPY didn't break is because tech didn't break yesterday. Um, but it's starting to break today. We'll see if it closes down below here at this uh, 101.80 level. And if it if it can break, uh, if it can close like an hourly close basically below this level, that should set it in motion to at least come down and do a gap fill around 175, but most likely going to do more. Um, looks like we also have a little bit of an uptrend here. Eh. You know, it's kind of benefit of the doubt here, but we could call it. Eh, I can't quite make it, so we'll have to take that away. Um, again, if you only have two points, it's not a trend. You need more than two. You need at least three. Okay, let's look at F XLF financials. So now I've gone through the S&P 500. I've gone through tech. We'll look at financials. We'll look at healthcare. Those pretty much will give you an idea or a read on the market. And then we can look at some individual stocks. So here's XLF. Now we do have that uptrend that we made yesterday. So you've got, a t this is the hourly chart. You got the tag here, tag here, and tag here. Um, so that gives you your trend line and 
yesterday you can see we came down held that trend line bounced up but that ended up being just kind of a fake move today gap down and sold off we're now below trend so and we do have an hourly close below trend right here um, if if this hour closes so we got about 30 minutes left but if this hour closes below trend well that's a break of trend so I'd expect you know you can easily get some back testing from below uh, but at that point this trend is broken so now we'll look at this trend being resistance and we start to move lower uh, and we'll gap we should gap fill we've got a gap right here that's probably the nearest target and that what sits right there at 21 about 22 bucks all right XLV <clears throat> I'm definitely interested in this one given that the levels are so clear but the issue is that when the levels are so clear that you um, you know you oftentimes don't get a great entry or get an objective area to to enter um, looking to short this one given the nature of the rest of the market but we need to see this break of this 9680 level and if we get the break it's going to be an impulsive breakdown because there's been so much trading and position taking on this sideways range that you'll have a rush for the exits for the for the you know side of the trade that ends up being wrong so I, I expect that they'll the way they're going to do this is trap the money with a gap down. That's how I think they're going to do it. It'll gap down and then that will cause panic selling and most likely every you know you'll have a big move down. A kind of a gap and crap is what they call it. So that's what I'll look for. Probably don't want to enter this until you see that gap down just because this has uh, you know it's bounced off support several times. You can see you know you had three clean here's a fourth four clean bounces off support where it held so there's no reason why there couldn't be a fifth and we just need to wait for the gap down if there is a gap down you'll also want to watch out for the fake out because um, everybody's waiting for a gap down uh, that wants to short probably so if they gap it down and a bunch of people pile in short they might ramp it up higher and recover that trend line or just ramp it up and bounce it off resistance so you're gonna have to watch the price action it, there will be movement for sure when that you know when or if a gap down happens um, and there will be opportunities to trade it but you'll have to just watch the price action when it plays out whether it's going to be a gap in crap or a gap in recovery lots can happen but there will be a lot of um, trickery happening at that moment because there's going to be a lot of uh you know volatility in the stock or in the in this etf so watch for that here's walmart interesting enough you can see the hourly chart you've got resistance right there at 121.13 uh we're trading below resistance now so everything like our kick you know everything popping up to that level is you know basically shortable but should be um, seen as kickback rallies and will you know will be rejected um, and you can see that today in the price action here's this hourly candle they ramped it all the way up got close to the resistance and then the seller stepped in and rejected it down so they're stepping in early you can see right here they did it again and again right here so the last couple times it had it's made moves up to resistance the sellers have stepped in early and and pushed it back down so sellers are clearly in control here and they're you know continuing to push this thing down so again i stick with the short trade on this it continues to work and continues to show me that we're moving down to the bottom of the bigger bearish rising wedge that you can see on the daily chart all right so that's just a, a clean pattern right there that continues to work so you just let it work okay when tech breaks the market breaks so we watch apple and microsoft still with apple still within its uptrend line coming back down for a test so we're probably going to get a test of support here sometime soon and then we have to watch to see if it holds or breaks that's about it so this is an hourly chart you can draw out the uh, support line right there if you want to you know kind of look at that here's microsoft microsoft fell right to support today undercut it slightly and then they bounced it up and it held that's no, um, you know, Microsoft's not going to break this support line 
probably intraday. It's going to have to come in the form of a gap down. There's just too many algos and programs and people just buying these things blindly at support. They just every time it hits support, they buy it. And um, so that's what creates the strength and, and the uptrend in these things. So if there's going to be a breakdown, it's probably going to have to come in the form of a bull trap. Um, but we'll watch. We'll see if this thing wants to actually break. It's probably just going to chop around and hold support today. I don't expect it to move too much higher, but it'll probably just move around and hold this support line. Here's DraftKings. I actually re-entered the short uh, this morning. The reason why I did is we have support right here at 35.38. Yesterday, when we broke down and then started to recover it, I didn't like that action because it was a you know basically created a bear trap. It um, was a false breakdown and then recovered and so I closed it yesterday with a with a profit a nice profit and then today I noticed that you know they opened it up and it started selling down and it started to break so I took that short again because you know it now it's already done the false breakdown and it broke down again so now that it's broken down a second time it's kind of a different it's a different trade basically and this should continue so I expect this to sell off Moving down to the target at 29, uh, 20 bucks. That's a gap, a little gap right there. So I think that's where we're heading. All right, and let's let's wrap up with Tesla. Um, there's nothing too new about the gold trade happening right now. Again, I've showed what I was looking for in the uh, the miners that I watch uh, in the video yesterday. So you can go back and watch that. Nothing's changed from that um, posture. But Tesla. So this one, you know. I'm not a huge fan of trading Tesla. Um, it is, it's just a wild card stock. It, it doesn't react always cleanly to levels and people buy it. Just, it, it's a pump stock where people will just, you know, it, it'll go parabolic and people will just chase it. And so, it, you know, if you're shorting this, it can be very dangerous because there, this stock is kind of a mania stock where, you know, it can just go higher and higher and higher. Um, so, but you know, you, you can make a lot of money on both sides of the trade with this one up or down. So we'll go ahead and look at it. Here's what I got for the support. I've got this trend line, this price channel. Um, really, I don't have much on the upside because I've only got two data points here and here. Uh, and so this doesn't really outline the top of the price channel, but the bottom I've got a couple reactions, one in a cluster right here and then three. So we break the bottom of the cluster or bottom of this trend line. And then there's a little bit of support I could find at 942.50. Um, you can see reacted a little bit around there, a little bit here. It's not the cleanest level. So, uh, but I also zoomed it out and that was the high back here. Nine, nine, you know, it's right around there, 940. It's about 940. Sorry, this is a thousand dollar stock. So to be about a dollar off, is not a big deal. Yeah, it's about 9, 9.44 or some, somewhere right in there. And that was the peak right there. So figured that might be a level. So what I would look for, just to give it the benefit of the doubt, is to break that 9.44 level and close. You want that hourly close below there. And then that should set this in motion for you know a move down. Um, first level of sub, you know price target, I guess, on this. I mean, you have this big gap right down here at 650. So I, that's that's a clear trade idea right there. And that's a nice move. Um, Tesla can easily do that move too. It's a mover. And that's about 32% down from where we're at. So I would think that is probably the trade if it's gonna happen. Um, and I, I'll be watching for it, I suppose. If it breaks this 944, I'll be looking for a move down to 650 to, to gap fill. And, and then that would be the end of the trade for me on that one. There's an idea, but for now, still in an uptrend. So there's nothing bearish about it. You know, this trend line, I just was marking some stuff out. We've kind of plateaued a little bit. Um, we do have on the hourly a little bit of divergence. You can see here's your RSI divergence where you make a higher high. Um, but it's not, no, it's not really divergence because we didn't make a higher high. The RSI is moving down and the price is moving down. So they're, they're not diverging. Um, same with the PPO. And then on the daily, um, yeah, no divergence there either uh, on the RSI. And on the PPO, we do have divergence on the daily. 
and we do we don't have it on the OSI, but we have it on the daily right here you can see here's the peak where we made the high and then we made a lower peak area on the ppo and we made higher prices so we do have negative divergence on the ppo on the daily chart so that could signal a um, potential trend change but again 944 is what i would be looking for Okay, guys, that's all I got for you. Um, give me a thumbs up. If you're finding value, leave a comment below. Appreciate the uh, interaction. Catch you on the next video.